sentence right there is, to say is trippy enough. <laughs> I thought he was drunk. Gary calls me and he's like, hey, I got an idea for you. Why don't you be both Batman and Joker? Ah. <laughs> Um, and you literally—I don't know if you felt this way. Well, did you get to? Did you get to work with the guy from no. Joker? No. What? Did you work together? Who? You, you, you Wait, he's the same person. Yeah. I, he, I, he won't work with anybody else. You can't look him in the eye. It's really, really awkward. I won't take any line reads. Um, I. Uh, that was such a great question. That completely derailed me. Um, How trippy was it? I was so trippy that I stumbled walking into the, to the studio. You always, I don't know if you felt this way, but I always feel like they're going to recast me. That this is just glorified scratch track, and it was like, ah, we tried it with Troy. And then you start realizing, oh, I'm being an arrogant, pompous ass by thinking that my performance could bring down something that's as awesome as Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's a good concept, you know? Um, and as you go through it, you, the movie that plays out in my mind is totally different than the movie that, that we're going to watch today together. And the first time I watched that Shredder fight, mm. I was like, that is exactly, like, that's what I want to see happen with comic books. We can't really talk about this, but End of the Spider-Verse was the first, like, yeah, hero movie that was like, that's a comic book come to life. Yeah. And, and then we had that moment, that Shredder fight in the beginning where I was like, I can see this as the panels and it's just popping out into life. You're one of my favorite characters, dude. I've been loving this character for a decade. Like, Ra's al Ghul. Yeah? So people are asking, is it Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul? And apparently, DC has uh, come out with a statement. Have they? Said, yes. Uh, and they Ra said Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul is how he's known, and only the League of Assassins will call him Ra's al Ghul. What a great way to hand wave the Nolan years. <laughs> only the ones who have been a part of League of Shadows and didn't really grow up with the comic but books I and watch animated series, they call him this. I call him Ra's al Ghul, and I figure he's the head of the League of Assassins, and he's the demon's head, so uh, I call him Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to interview him, just because maybe you guys are no, going to ask him. Cool. I, I grew up, and I probably, I don't know, we've, you and I have talked before, you and I have talked before, you and I have talked before, haven't we? We've, we've, talked, we've talked before, we've for talked sure. Before. I talk about this all the time, how I used to race home every day, and at 4 o'clock, uh, Batman the Animated Series came on, and that was like, just there's a great shot uh, that you guys are gonna see in the opening shot where I'm like, it they they looked and went, that's mm -hmm. the opening from the animated series. This is the dark, the, the dark the, series. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the dark Batman. It's the yeah, blimp, yeah. you know, with the with the spotlights down, and I was like, ah, I yeah. freaked out. But uh, <coughs> what was his name? Not Christopher Lee, but who played him in the animated series? Um, David Warner. No, 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 no. Who? Who? Wait, who? Oh, David Warner played. David, David Warner, Warner yeah. played Ra's al Ghul in the series. And I was like. Man, they did such a good job of like, that's 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 the presence that I feel from this character and the animation style, the character style is so similar. The mm -hmm. first time that I heard you when you first walk out, I'm not gonna respond to anything. When you first walk out, I went, motherfucker, man. <laughs> I've okay. Been wanting, no, but I've been ever since uh, Batman Begins, ever since Liam Neeson kicks kicks this guy's ass uh, in in the. Up your chest. Begins. Your arms will take care of themselves. I was like. <laughs> That's really smart. <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was in love with this character, and then I, and I've been collecting comics since I was a kid, and just the idea of a character that is centuries old, mm -hmm. that, that has all this experience, all this knowledge from the masses of humanity, from going like a vampire. He's been living year after year after year, watching empires rise and fall. That's an incredible character yeah. to, to be able to portray someone who is so methodical and so focused on one mission and. He's not necessarily wrong. No. Like I mean, Batman and him are not necessarily going for different things. It's just, it's just Raz is willing to do whatever it takes. Whereas Batman's like, no, no. It's kind of like uh, the other comic book company has a similar kind of dichotomy between Professor X and Magneto. Right. The other company. Yeah. <laughs> that which shall not be named at <laughs> this particular table. But if you catch me outside, <laughs> I I've always looked at at uh, Batman and Raz as Holmes and Moriarty. Yes, um, we are That's only we're, we just happen to be on opposite sides of this. But really, if we'd sit down, it's like that scene in Heat where Pacino and De Niro sit down from across each other. Scene. Like we we scene. could do this because we're really on the same side. You just happen to have a badge, and I don't. That's a great scene. It's a, it's a great, great scene. scene. I don't want to have to bring you down. I don't want to have to I kill you. You don't understand. <laughs> if I see you, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> you understand? If I see you. <laughs> 
<laughs> worst De Niro and worst. That's your takeaway from this round table. It's like, it actually hurt his performance in the movie we saw later. His Pacino was so bad. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna see in the movie how that how that plays out, but I I like doing things. A writer sits down and they're like, "This is how I see this thing playing out," and I believe my job is to meet them where they're at, as opposed to them having to adjust themselves to what I feel comfortable with. Like I can control the tea and I can control the temperature of the room, but ultimately that script is bigger than all of us. So I like to do it as they laid it out. Um, even if a lot of times we're like, so we get this kind of big fight at the very beginning, like, let's go, let's do it, let's get into it. Um, and there's two fights <laughs> in the beginning, so I kind of bit off a little bit more than I could chew. Um, but to me, it's like, that, that feels more true to the performance. It's like, if, if Batman's exhausted after a fight, then let's not fake being exhausted. It's like, we just, I just screamed. And I'm, well, you didn't, bastard, you didn't have to do anything. <laughs> but the... I sweat. I, I've, I've watched Mark do Joker before, and it's just effortless. It's not fair. He's too good at it. And whenever I do Joker, it's like, I leave it like, <laughs> I left that session. I was like, I don't know if I can talk for a while. Like, I don't think I'll ever be the same again. And you leave and you're sweating. <laughs> And oh, I, 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 I know what you're talking you about. You know exactly what I'm Ra talking about. Roz, Roz is, doesn't exert a lot of effort in his fights because he's just such a badass ninja. Yeah, he doesn't have to just, like, I'm more powerful. I've done, I've done plenty of voice sessions where I have to, oof, ah, uh, oh, ah, yeah. uh, and then you're, like, at the end of it, you're sweating. And, yeah, you're, I'm done. and you're actually sore from all the imaginary blows you've, you've received. But in real life, do you talk to yourself? Dude, th this is what's so funny. Gary, Melissa Havjay and Gary Mariano are the ones that dreamt up this stupid idea to put me in this, you know, two characters in the same movie. And they did it because they know that I do this when cameras aren't rolling and no mics are in play. I will just go back and forth between these two people talking. Why are you talking? Yeah, you're getting this, aren't you? Good for you. Clear like, your ringtone. Yeah. Um, ringtone. <laughs> I. This is what we do as actors. We're crazy people. We're crazy people walking around with these crazy characters in our head, and we're just waiting for someone to give us an opportunity to just just to get them out, to give us the proper catharsis yeah. that we can do a shared experience. Mm -hmm. And not be put in an asylum. Cast and not be put in an does, asylum. Does uh, Jeremy view sh the Shredder as Way a to bring a call back in. <laughs> no, <laughs> Jeremy. Does yes. he view the Shredder oh, as, AKA a, or <laughs> as a worthy equal? He can maybe pass the mantle to and maybe marry Talia, or does he. Shredder? <laughs> or does he see him as the main Homie, to How are you going to. This he man. offered clear, by the way. So answer the question for our, for our gentleman friend, but like the You're nerd talking, in me is going, you are, how? You are, talking, dare you. <laughs> you are talking to a man who, as I said, has, has been alive for centuries. This man does not suffer fools. No. Well, and, um, you know, I mean, Shredder, he, he can get things done in his own way, but. Re Roz doesn't like to play with others. He likes to be in charge, and he likes the people to be at least mentally stable. <laughs> yes. so, so that he can so steal their semen and impregnate his daughter <laughs> to give him a bastard son that would go on to be his Robin. That's how this works. That's how it works. So I don't know if, I don't know if Roz would, would view Shredder as uh, particularly competent and dependable. Well, he can't even beat a bunch of mutant turtles. Exactly. Well, guy Once he can handle amphibians, then maybe. I mean, <laughs> which is really the crazier? The blender's a little bit more functional. <laughs> <laughs> what if you run into a guy that's not scared of bats? You're like, I find them cute. Like, well, then my whole thing doesn't work. <laughs> I need you to be scared of bats. What is Roz's relationship with his grandson in this movie? Uh, that's a good question. I don't, think, I don't think that's actually broached in this movie. I think um, this movie. He is an absentee <laughs> grandfather. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's got big things to do. Russ has a lot. He's got a lot on his plate. Um, this movie, from what what I've uh, been able to observe, is really an homage to the fans, um, the creators, the writer, the director, the producers. They're all huge yeah. fans and geeks and nerds themselves. And what they've tried to do with this project, in addition to just telling an amazing and fun story, uh, is give the fans of both franchises something to really sink their teeth into, all sorts of winks and nudges and nods to um, the histories 
of both the DC and the, the TMNT uh, fandom. So I don't think it goes into the kind of depth and details of, of that level of storytelling. And also, you have to understand, uh, Batman and uh, Ra's al Ghul is a very dark part of a comic book franchise. And the Turtles, I mean, it's a completely different tone. Yeah. And so we're blending these two tones, and they managed to do it really brilliantly. So you're going to get to see a lot of tongue-in-cheek, dark humor coming out of our mouths that you might not have normally seen uh, because we have to deal with this, this turtle world. And what surprised me with that is how you could have this super, super dark moment, and then it feels completely endemic to the franchise for Michelangelo to just say something stupid and off the cuff. <laughs> you guys are going to see, you're like, wow. And like you said, they're, they're, we're blending tones, and we're clearly crossing lines, and maybe that's part of the buy-in. When you sit down, it's in the title. It's like Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, whatever. You know, it just it feels like kind of a fever dream. So you buy into the craziness from the from, from the very beginning. It is a fever. Um, but it does manage to have like I believe this is a Batman story, mm -hmm. and I also believe it as a turtle story. And, and what, the, Gary? Well, we have uh, five minutes before we're supposed to start the movie. <laughs> Boom. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. All right, so we should go in there. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, way to end on the dark moment. Yeah. Raz has a, a very refined palette and, and turtle is a delicacy.